Welcome back. I want to do a quick review of two more little Waldorf books for you. Uh, so the first one I want to go over is called The Last Wild Witch. And this one is written by an author called Starhawk. And I do believe Starhawk has some other books available of the adult kind. Um, not adult books, but you know adult reading level. <laughs> um, it's illustrated by Lindy Kehoe and this book is really nice. It, um, to make a long story short, because it's a decent length book, lots of words, um, it is about a little perfect town that always follows the rules and a wild witch that lives in the woods on the outskirts of the town and the wild witch will make her magic brew every night and the odor will waft into the children's bedrooms and a little bit of wildness will get in them. And they always go to the visit the witch and um, taste her magic brew and their parents are upset that, you know, they want to play and roam and explore and they're too wild, they say. So um, the adults of the town want to um, make the witch leave and cut down the forest so that she no longer has a home and um, how the children save the forest. Um, I don't really know how to describe it other than that. Um, basically, the book is about wildness, and you know, at the end, the parents realize they shouldn't cut down the forest because it, it feels magical to them, and you know, it really is quite a nice forest, they say. And so it's more about conservation than anything else, I think. Um, it talks about the homes for the animals and um, how pretty it is and that sort of thing. Um, and also about how at the end the adults get just a little bit of wildness. I'll read the last page to you here. It says, um, <clears throat> And sometimes at night when the wind came out of the west carrying wildness with it, everybody gathered to dance and sing all night long with the deer and the rabbits and the birds and they weren't even tired in the morning. So things were not so perfect in the no longer perfect town, but they were better, the end. And the pictures are nice. Um, they're really nice colors. It makes a point of saying that the witch would look like anybody's grandma, that she looks like anybody. So she's not a scary witch as portrayed in some children's books. Her work is very nice and nature-based. Um, <clears throat> I think they call them like, I'm trying to remember, <clears throat> but there's Little Billy Blue and um, I don't know, something green. Anyway, the children are named by their colors. And the wild witch is just peaceful and doesn't say anything and <clears throat> um, lets the adults come and try to cut down the forest, but the forest kind of fights back. <laughs> so it's nice. It's quite a long book, as you can see. So much better for an older child's reading time before bed. Um, but I would say the main theme is more about conservation than it is nature in a way. I mean, it's it's pretty close to equal, but I think that it's nice that, you know, it's about um, protecting the land around us and that sort of thing. And so you can kind of see some of the artwork here. Here's the main page. And then at the very end, it says, Starhawk is one of the most respected voices in modern Earth-based spirituality. She's also known as a global justice activist and organizer whose work and writings have inspired many to action. She's the author or co-author of 10 books, including XYZ. I won't read all that. She practices permaculture and teaches uh, courses in the regenerative design with earth activist trainings. Her website is starhawk.org. So... It's very nicely done. It's a nice book, and I would say it would be good for, um, I mean, you can read a bedtime story at any age, really, but I'd say it'd be especially good 
for children um, more like four to eight as far as comprehension goes. Yeah, it's a really nice Waldorf book. I liked it. And lastly, I think this is the last one that I had coming in. And I will say I mentioned vegan books in my last one. And all three of those vegan books were actually written by Ruby Roth, which I didn't realize. And the two that I am not doing reviews on are, I think it was, that's why I don't eat, that's why we don't eat animals. And, um, what's the other one? I don't remember what the other one is, but it, it's the other main vegan book. Anyway, um, they're, they're very dark. <laughs> um, I'm not comfortable primarily because of the illustrations. I'm not comfortable reading it to her at 18 months. Um, cause the illustrations are pretty graphic and a little violent. <laughs> so, and, and that's not to say that it's not the way things are, cause obviously it is, but if a child was going to get anything from that other than the violent images, um, I think they need to be much older and more mature of spirit before reading something like that. And I think maybe they would need to be <clears throat> sort of emotionally prepared. And I would show you what those books look like. I actually did already return those to the library. Um, so I apologize, I don't have the covers to show you, but um, I didn't find them appropriate for this age, and that's going to be up to the individual parent, obviously. Um, I think a child that would be reading them would have to be sort of prepared as far as they have to, not that can't be the first time they're hearing about what happens in um, the farming industry, or the first time they hear about what a nugget actually is or where it comes from. Um, the verbiage was very to the point, very direct. And so I would put that at a much older category, like between eight and 12. Um, that's going to be up to the parent. <laughs> I don't, I think a big part of how that's received and able to be processed would be, um, the maturity of the child and, you know, if, how much they understand already before reading those books. Um, I was kind of surprised I don't at, at how dark they were. <clears throat> I know you can't shelter your children from everything and it's good for them to know, you know, where that food is coming from so they know why we don't choose to eat that way. But I don't know. I wasn't all that comfortable with those books. You know, I might revisit the idea when she's much older of reading them. Um, because there are so few vegan books on the market, <clears throat> but, um, as of right now, I wasn't even comfortable with her seeing those kind of pictures because they were illustrated, but they were graphic. So that's just me. If you want direct and to the point, and maybe you have an older child, look up Ruby Roth and check out her vegan books. Okay. So the last one is the classic Waldorf book, the story of the root children. And I might slaughter this author's name, but it's Sibyl von Olfers or something like that. But um, I had an idea of what to expect from this book. And it, it surpassed what I thought um, this book would be. It's very lovely. And it's 100% nature-based. And it's sort of, I guess I would describe it as going through the changes of the seasons from the perspective of the root children, which are like the roots of plants or flowers that are um, perennial and, you know, kind of shrivel up during the winter and then they bloom again in the spring. And the way it describes it is basically this woman here, they call, um, they call Mother Earth. And I liked that she was sort of the crone, you know, she was um, an older, you know, motherly maternal woman. And these are the root children and they're all in brown right now. And the root children are accompanied by the bugs that are sleeping during the winter, you know? And um, 
So every spring, Mother Earth comes down and wakes up the root children and says, okay, it's time to play. Um, and so they say, hooray, spring is coming. And it goes through like, you know, it's all very much an analogy. Like it goes through how they prepare to bloom. Like she gives them all cloth to make their clothes and their clothes are like their different kind of blooms. And so they make their clothes, which are how they appear when they bloom. It's really a neat book. Um, let's see. So, you know, like she says, when they come to show her their clothes are done, she says, well, well, you have been quick, she exclaimed, and how nice it all looks. <clears throat> Even the little ants who had been helping Mother Earth to wind up her wool came to look inquisitively. They had never seen such splendid clothes. So it's sort of like, you know, how the blooms happen quicker some years than others and that sort of thing. Um, let's see. They say the ladybirds, beetles, and grubs, and bumblebees had also been sleeping and now had to be woken up. They had to be washed and brushed and painted colorfully and made to shine so they would look as beautiful as possible. So you can see on this page they kind of paint the ladybugs. And then it says, at last it was really springtime. Mother Earth opened the door. I love the analogy of that, you know, it's very pretty. Um, so then out into the lovely warm sun, uh, spring sunshine came the stately procession of beetles, ladybirds, root children, and their blades of grass and flowers. And so they make the procession from the underground. And then that's kind of the idea of that they're blooming. <clears throat> so they dance and play. Um, and, you know, this is the analogy of this is, like I said, the idea of when they bloom and, um, you know, the vines travel up and things like that. And it never really says all that, but it gives a personification to the, um, to the blooms and the, the springtime growth and things like that, that I think makes it easy for even very young children to kind of understand, um, what's happening with the seasons. So I think this book really connects you to the change in the seasons from a very simple, in a very simple way from a very young age. <clears throat> um, so they play for a couple pages and different things with the grass. Um, so it says, but summer also came to an end. The sharp autumn wind whirled the brightly colored leaves through the air and tugged at the root children's clothes, saying, time to go back. So who called the wind? Hurry home. It's getting cold here. It's time to go to bed. And it says, so then they all went back again in a long procession. Mother Earth was standing by the door and hugged each child one by one. Come in, children, she said, and you too, beetles and bees. It's warm and cozy in here, and I've got something for you all to eat and drink. After that, you must all go to sleep until I wake you up again in the springtime. And all the little root children went down under the ground again to start their long winter sleep. And here's Mother Earth hugging them all. And, you know, it's, it's a simple book. And it really is the story of the root children. And I, you know, I think it's so nice. I think that she has written other stories that are like this. And I can't recall what they're all called right now, but it's the story of, and it's, you know, other things like this. Um, I think this would be a nice one to keep for a Waldorf home. And it would be, you know, I just, the nature based books are so grounding and connecting for children, I think, which is a big draw for them. It helps them to understand changes and rhythms of the earth in words and pictures that they can comprehend. And this book is one example of a way in which that was really beautifully done. And so these are my two last Waldorf reviews for now. I might do some others in the future. Um, like I said, I do want to review that um, letter from Mother Earth book that I read that um, was so beautiful and I may end up even just ordering that because it was so nice. Um, but these are the two for now. I hope you enjoyed the Waldorf reviews. If there's any others you want reviewed, um, just comment below and let me know so I can get that book for you and do a review. I think reviews are good because it helps you know if it's a book you want to buy or not. If you're a minimalist like we are, you know, you can't really go around just buying every book you see or you'd have a huge library. Um, we try and keep very minimal books and the ones that are just, you know, fun to read here and there, 
we just rent from the library. And if there's one that's really super special, then we might buy that one. Um, so yeah, if there's something you want me to review for you before you buy it, something you're thinking about, go ahead and comment below. There is one that I'm dying to get, um, and I've had it on my list for about two years, but I'm not going to give it away for now because I might be buying it in the next few months, and then I want to be able to review it for you at that point. So in the meantime, please like this video, subscribe to this channel, share it with a friend. Love you guys. Thanks for watching.